the same, they all say the same thing, and they don't stick to their promises. Right. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's see one of the fresh faces um, of UKIP uh, from our Croydon uh, centre, um, Winston McKenzie. Croydon candidate is there. Um, good evening, Mr. McKenzie. Uh, you, you called Croydon a dump yesterday. Do you, How are you doing, do you, David? What? Hi there. Did, why, why do you think Croydon's How a dump? Doing? I've lived in Croydon ever since, I, ever since I was five years old. I came to this country, my parents worked hard, and I've watched Croydon grow and grow and grow. And over the years, the people of Croydon have been deceived, disenfranchised by their local government. And the UKIP fox came along and feathers are rustling tonight. There are feathers everywhere. They fail to reach the wider community. And it will always be that way. Tonight, you're seeing the beginning of something absolutely phenomenal, David, because people from Labour, Conservatives, not to mention the nondescript Liberal Democrats, the Greens don't even come into it. They're all learning a very harsh lesson. Nigel Farage has led his party to something absolutely fantastic. What a great leader. And it's this type of leadership that this country needs today. And if you're British, whether you be black, white, yellow or pink, you've got to get out there. You've got to get out there and defend this country and, it's, and all that it stands for. All that it stands for. You ask me why I thought Croydon had become a dump? It's, it's, it's simply because the people have been disenfranchised. So, so, uh, so just to interrupt you for a moment, so the issue for you is not so much UKIP as pulling out of Europe, but all the other things people are upset by. Immigration and cost of living and e right, everything. David. But it, it, it's, not, it's not just immigration, David. What's happened is there's been this massive drive about racism. And the word racism has been demeaned and diminished. When it's used now, it doesn't mean a single thing. Because certain sections of the, um, the, the press, together with um, the coalition, have used it as a political weapon. They've played the race card 100%. How do you if mean? I, how do you mean? In, tomorrow, in what way have they I done said, that? In what way have they done that? They've used the race, they've used this, they've turned around and said that um, you keep a racist. Now, I'd like to know whenever did an Englishman um, have to fight against the color of his skin? Now, I'm a black man and I'm proud. But the simple fact is, the media have turned around and said, that man is black, you can't call him black. You can't. And now we have a situation whereby the word racism means nothing. So the media, together with the three main parties, have used this race card to trick, to fool, and condemn the people into believing that our party is a racist party. Our right. leader, Nigel Farage, is a Christian man. Okay. And why would I be involved with a bunch of racists? Tell me what you think is going to happen in Croydon tonight, and, and indeed at the general election. Well, I believe in Croydon tonight, we'll do very well. Whether or, not, whether or not we'll make any real fantastic gains, I'm not certain yet. But I do know that the strategy in the rest of London and some parts in Kent and what have you, there have been significant change. All you can hear, David, is UKIP, UKIP, UKIP. This party and its leader have changed the face of British politics. And these guys sitting back, they keep coming with this rhetoric that one day everyone will change their minds and return to the status quo. Well, the status quo is no more. Guys, you need to wake up. You need to wake up. It's all gone wrong. It's a disaster. Labour have lost votes. The Conservatives have lost votes. And no one seems to want to know the truth. Some people, David, they just like to live a lie. They live a lie. Mr. McKenzie, thank, thank you. And they don't want to face the truth. 
Thank you very much indeed, and thanks for joining Thank us. You. So, Emma Reynolds and Nicky Morgan, in particular, the two main parties here, you heard what he says. Uh, your time's up. UKIP's on the way. What do you say to that? No, I don't think that's right. I think what's happened is that we have seen tonight, obviously, uh, UKIP, they did well, they've done well in previous elections. Tonight is, is uh, a step uh, forward, uh, and I think it is uh, going to be a, a different... Uh, 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 campaign between now and the next uh, general election. We do have a fourth party that clearly has a very loud voice and appeals to a number of people, uh, but they don't yet have any uh, members of parliament. Uh, we'll have to see what happens in the European elections, obviously. But I've already said that I think that there is a sort of an anti-politics uh, mood, a uh, fed up with everybody, uh, and, uh, and that's incumbent on all of us. What the uh, nondescript, as he described them, the nondescript Liberal Democrats going to do? Well, I, I think if there are a significant number of UKIP councillors elected, if they do indeed end up controlling some councils, I think it will be very interesting to, to see how effective they, they are at doing that, because certainly the experience, for instance, of having uh, UKIP members of the European Parliament is that they do very little when they are there. Um, so let's see if, they, if they're capable of running local authorities then the electorate will be able to, to, to look at their record. At the moment, to some extent, their support is, is that of a, a protest party. I understand that. People who are, who are concerned about issues like immigration. But when they're running a local council, it won't be immigration they're dealing with. It'll be the bread and butter of services. And are they capable of doing that? And for Labour? I do I agree with uh, Nicky Morgan that there's an anti-politics mood out there. And I think that actually what we're seeing in terms of UKIP doing well in, in the elections that have come in so far is that it's more about anti-politics than anti-Europeanism. And actually on the doorstep today in Wolverhampton, where I'm an MP, nobody mentioned a referendum on Europe. Actually, nobody mentioned Europe. And so I think what we need to do is make sure that in the next 11 and a bit months, we start rebuilding that trust. And I do think there is a lack of trust in mainstream politicians. I've only been a politician for four years. And, you know, I do get it on the doorstep. I get, you know, you're all the same. But bizarrely, actually, the policies of the two main parties yeah. couldn't be more different. Well, are, it's just going to be a very different campaign next year than it was in 2010, I think. Indeed. But the bizarre thing about that analysis is, of course, it makes it much harder to do anything about. I mean, if they were saying to you a European referendum, it would be relatively easy to do something about it. You could change your policy on it. But if your analysis, your shared analysis is, they don't like any of us for rather indistinct reasons it becomes very very hard as mainstream established parties to know quite what you do about that well, well unless unless you wait of course for them to become part of the establishment because i would ar argue that nigel farage is part of the establishment whether you know he, he says he isn't but look at his background well, then he, he becomes the very thing that he condemns which is uh, he, he, the he becomes politician. the thing he condemns and they are then in positions of power where they will be taking decisions where i suspect their electorate will find them one well, then we'll have a fifth party set up with the plague on I'm all not sure forum. where the protest vote no, will go next. This is a request that UKIP should get to win some councils tonight. Incidentally, we, they, they came mightily close in Rotherham. They got 10 seats in Rotherham, UKIP. Labour 11. Extraordinary result. Mm -hmm. It's only one third there. Yeah. Only one third, so they would have had an uphill struggle to get it. But the other interesting thing is we've only had 18 councils in. We've got 143 to go, so there's a long way to go. Mm. What they do quite in these councils, I don't know whether they count right through the night. Perhaps we could find that out. Perhaps John would know. John, John, do you know whether they... Do they count all, all through the night? Um, once they've decided to count during the night, they will try to finish okay. um, during the night. They won't want to come back on Friday morning to finish it off. So mm -hmm. the truth is, given the pace with which results are coming in, slowed up by the coincident European election, is that, you know, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, we may still be getting significant flows of results, I suspect. Well, we haven't, haven't even had 20 in so far, and they, of course, have to separate... European ballot exactly. papers from the others, yes. Exactly. Anecdotally, I'm just hearing people say not just that separation, but the fact that European paper is so long and involves a lot of folds <laughs> is itself taking a lot of time. It all has to be done, and there are plenty of voters who never got to the bottom. I mean, uh, bottom how, how, how many, there were twin, wasn't it 23 parties standing in the European and it, Because election? of the list system, obviously, you've yes. got to put all the names on, on the ballot papers, so that makes you, it even longer. Yeah, it's I not quite as bad as Australia, where I think the ballot papers are massive. But, um, yeah. but what was also interesting was that on the European ballot paper, the, the first couple of parties had UK and or Europe in their names, and it was quite clear that some people, I think, were voting for those, thinking that, in fact, it was UKIP, because it had UK or it had Europe in it, mm -hmm. and they were... Independ uh, independence from Europe, or whatever it was, yes. Do you know these other 20...